Hi, my name is Maria Valella. Today I'm going to be demonstrating and explaining Kapotasana. Kapotasana is a really large backbend. It comes in the second series after a bunch of other smaller backbends. When I first got Kapotasana and started practicing Kapotasana, I used to dread it. Um, it can be really, really challenging because it's such a deep pose. Um, and for me, it was going into my lower back. Um, but now I've learned how to work this pose in a much different way so that I can bring the back bend into my upper back. And now I have to say it's probably one of my favorite poses because it, access, it allows me to access my upper back in a way that no other back bend really does. Um, and so now it's a favorite pose of mine. Um, so we'll be going over the, what those key aspects of the pose are that help to keep me safe and um, find that pose in a, in a comfortable and steady way. So a couple of the things that I found um, really helpful when I was working on Kapotasana and trying to find a way to do it without hurting my back um, is working with blocks. Um, and so the more that we can keep our legs strong and stable and our pelvis um, both in a neutral position as much as it can be in that pose and also um, just more of an engagement through the lower belly and more support, um, the better we're going to be in the pose so that it really can be more of a, a back bend in the upper back. Um, so first of all, what we could do is take two blocks um, and a strap can also be used here. I like, I like the blocks better, but you can take the block between the feet now, when we're placing the block, it's important to place the block so that it's right in between the feet so that our ankles can squeeze into the block. Um, very often when this pose is done, particularly when it's a new pose for people, the feet come together and the knees go wide apart. And when that happens, the glutes clench and then we have no choice but to thrust the hips forward and compress the low back. So what I'm asking you to do is actually do the opposite. Instead, keep the knees very close, the shins and thighs parallel. So everything is just hip distance. And it may mean that you can't go as deep into the pose, and it may mean that you may not do the full expression of the pose right now, but that's okay. It's a work in progress. And when you do it, you're gonna actually get a lot more benefit out of it and a lot less um, pain, <laughs> hopefully. So we'll place the one block between the feet so that the outer ankles are firming in and the baby toes are reaching to the floor. Now this is a subtle action that may seem nitpicky, but it's actually really important to how the legs are working. If this is happening, we're not engaging the legs properly. So we really want the tops of the feet to be pressing down into the floor really strongly, the baby toes to pre be pressing down into the floor very strongly, and the outer shins, outer ankles firming in. Then from there, um, we'll also place a block in between the thighs. Now this is where we can use a strap. If, if you prefer, you can try it out with the strap around the upper thighs, and you wanna place it right at the top as part right up at the top of the thighs. Now, if you place a strap there, one of the reasons I don't like the strap is that you resist out into strap, out into the strap, and instead what I prefer is what you want to find is actually that you're firming the legs in. So with the block there, it helps to actually engage so that you actually have to squeeze the block. If you start to take kapotasana and your knees splay out and you lose the block, then it means you've gone too far. So you squeeze the block, press the tops of the feet, press the ankles down, bring your hands to prayer, and start to lift the chest up. Now, just working right here, that may be plenty for you. You may just stay here for today and just continually catch yourself lifting your ankles, letting your feet splay out, and just working against that, working to counter that pattern. Otherwise, you lift the chest up, lift the chest up, lift the chest up, tip the head back, and then the next stage would be to reach the arms back. Now, now I reach back and grab right a hold of my ankles, but the preliminary where you start off is just reaching your hands back like you would in a drop back. Um, and once you have your hands on the floor, you can start walking them in towards your feet. So I'm not gonna talk during this part. It may sound a little funny if I do. So inhale, on the exhale, Once your hands touch the floor, you may just stay here. So you can stay here working the actions of the legs so that the outer ankles and outer thighs are firming in, 
or you can start to walk the hands in, keeping the elbows in, reach for the feet, and start to lower down towards the elbows. And you can hold here for five breaths. And when you're ready to come up, you can come back to your hands, take a few more breaths here, straightening the arms completely, or not. <laughs> they can remain bent. You just want to continually squeeze the elbows in, then come up, and continually squeeze the block as you come up, and return back to starting position. So here's another way of approaching Kapotasana. Um, still, I would keep a block in between the feet. So again, what we don't want is the ankles to buckle out. We really want to keep the ankles firmed in so that we have a straight line from the outer knee to the baby toe. So the ankles are firming in and then also really, really important to continually press the tops of the feet down. Now, not everybody has enough flexibility if you're used to wearing shoes, a lot of times this is what it's going to look like. But you just continually reach through the top of the foot and press the top of the ankle down to the floor. Um, and I've also placed a strap a, a, at the top of my thighs. Now, the strap is there um, so that we can't let the legs go out. Now, you want to continually firming the thighs in. So it's not that you're resisting out into the strap. It's the opposite. You actually want to firm the thighs in, almost like you could loosen the strap. Okay, and then for this variation, we're working on taking the arms back. So let's say you've been working on the legs and you have your feet in place, they're doing their job, the legs are working, um, and you've started working on lifting the chest up. Um, once you start working, once you start to reach the arms back, you may find that right away you dump into your low back. So that's why we come to the wall. So we'll start off actually even a little bit closer. And the closer you are to the wall um, initially is probably better. So outer thighs firming in, baby toes reaching, outer ankles in. Hands come to prayer, namaste at the heart. Inhale, lift the sternum up. And then on the exhale, you'll reach your hands back to the wall. So my recommendation is to continually lift up through the crown of the head, continually lift the sternum up, and then just reach the arms up and see if you can reach the wall. And try not to place any weight into the hands. Just keep them lightly touching so that you can lift your chest high up. And then on an inhale, come up. And then exhale, take the hands back to prayer. So get comfortable with that piece where you're just reaching the arms up and to the wall. And then the next stage will be to start to reach down lower. So inhale. And just notice the difference between that where you're lifting up and this, which hurts the low back a lot. So it's an inhale to lift up. I'm just going to demonstrate the full posture um, and you can see what the full pose looks like. Um, I am a big fan of backing off and, and not going into full expression of the pose, but instead um, focusing on the, the, the aspects of the pose that are really important and just letting everything deepen with time. Um, as always, the breath is always number one. So if you're grunting or if you can't breathe or the breath is compromised in any way, then that's always a very clear indicator that you've gone too far and beyond where you're ready to be at today.